How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here, and this is probably the biggest thing I can recall reviewing on this YouTube channel. This is the Creator Max by Flashforge USA. It's a dual extruder 3D printer. What does that mean? First of all, a little backstory. I reviewed the Flashforge Adventure 3 last year. It's a great printer to get started on. It's a modestly sized print bed, and it can print most, but not all filaments pretty much straight out of the box. One thing the Adventure 3 could not print was TPU, and a lot of my drone parts that I make for my FPV quads are made out of TPU. So, really excited to get something else. It is a direct drive um, extruder style, which means we can print TPU right out of the box. I've used this printer to print PLA, ABS, PETG, and most notably TPU for various reasons, including some PPE uh, materials for medical personnel. I made a video about that recently and Flashforge committed to donating $150 to Raleigh's PPE printing efforts as part of the Masks for Docs Raleigh chapter. So thank you to Flashforge for committing to do that. Uh, but as we're talking about the Creator Max, it's kind of like a newer style from the Creator Pro. There's a couple different things. Most notably, now we have a touch screen on the front, and I guess it's about time to power this thing on. So let's just turn on the, the unit, and... So we have uh, this, this clear top over here, which is over these two guiding tubes, which go into the two extruders there. Um, on the rails and this goes X Y on the extruders and then the Z axis is the print bed So the print bed goes up and down or I guess down anyway as it continues to print now Even though this printer the creator max is not the most inexpensive printer you can find that's still quality It's not um, maybe a beginner's price range although it depends maybe it is uh, it's up to you and your budget, but it's still really easy to get started. You know, when you're using the flash print software, either hooking it up with USB or connecting to your computer with Wi-Fi, which is another upgrade from the Pro, you can pretty much get off the ground running. And they, they also provide an SD card with some test prints. So if you got the filament, you're ready to start printing some stuff and making sure that you can get a good print out of this. You have this door that you can open up and inside you got the print bed. So let's see, I, if I can remember the dimensions here. The build volume is 227 millimeters by 148 by 150 millimeters. And the nozzles are 0.4 millimeters. You might be able to get some bigger or smaller nozzles if you needed to. Um, I had no problem with the 0.4 millimeters working with some of the wood filled filament that I have, which suggests at least 0.6, if not 0.8 millimeters. No clogging issues, that's awesome. And unlike a bunch of other maybe cheaper 3D printers, you have a LED strip right in there so you can see perfectly what your printer's doing, very well illuminated in there. So the big selling point here obviously is the dual extruder system. It's my first dual extruder printer. Two filament spools are mounted on the back of this and then they're strung up through the feeder tubes into the extruder uh, from the back down over the top of this unit. It comes with two PLA filament spools. I had red and blue, and they're specific styles of spools, and they fit very nicely onto the spool holders that come with this thing. Unfortunately, uh, if you have like maybe Hatchbox or maybe some other type of filament manufacturer, it may not fit nicely on there. In fact, it might end up falling off. So I ended up printing different filament holders, found them on Thingiverse, um, they're much thinner and they pretty much uh, accept any type of filament spool style. And it really uh, came in handy when I was printing some, some, some of the filament that I already own, some of the TPU and some of the ABS that I had bought months ago. Right now, as it is, when you first get the Creator Max, there's only one fan. I mean, there's two fans that also uh, cool down the hot ends, but there's a third fan that cools your print and your, your filament as it comes out, your hot end area. Well, that's only on one side, which means that when you sh when this ships and you set it up and you have it the way it's intended to be, only one of the two uh, nozzles is actually coming into contact with that airstream. And that's why uh, they suggest if you're gonna be printing ABS, you wanna use the left uh, extruder. If you're gonna be printing PLA, you're gonna be using the right one. However, again, you can go on Thingiverse, you can print some things, and, and if it says Creator Pro, that might work too. Um, some of the uh, different styles of fan ducts that allow you to cool both uh, nozzles at once as opposed to just the left one. All right, here's this design. It was on the SD card, um, and this is for PLA. So this was printed with the right extruder, and I still kept the uh, raft 
which was part of the design. I mean, everything is like preloaded on here. So this is the design that the developers had put into there and assuming that they're the best settings for this printer. Um, this was the PLA that they sent me. And then we have our ABS version. And this one doesn't look quite so hot. Now this is some ABS that I had from last year. Could be just old and maybe a little bit uh, uh, not quite as dry as it could be. We do have some, some lines here that were not there, at least not that I recall. Okay, maybe a little bit one um, there in the PLA version. Uh, but this time it really looks like a, a defect, um, at, whereas the PLA it was more of just a, a line in the, the side there. Um, so yeah, not quite as good. You got some, some lines here as well on this flat part. And here is the first attempt at uh, the dual extrusion system in tandem. So this is ABS. And this is part of the test file. And you can see that we have a little bit of that elephant's foot going on. Um, we also have some oozing, that blue on the white is definitely there. We also have some white on the blue. But if we skip forward to the next day, this is uh, red and blue PLA, and this came out pretty well. Now that face does have some oozing with the red on the blue, but every other face looks pretty decent. That's the bottom right there. So um, yeah, finally was able to get a good print here. Was also able to print this uh, Tron figure. Now this did have a little bit of bleeding here in the center um, where the detail is pretty intricate but for the most part it turned out okay and maybe I can reprint this and make sure that that first layer really sticks down because that's a first layer issue it looks like. And here was my first ambitious uh, dual extrusion uh, thing. This is PLA. This is white and red PLA octopus. Um, again a little bit of oozing as well. Um, not all the white is completely white and there's a couple spots where the red also has white oozing onto it. So there's definitely some settings that can be tweaked with this. I'm not a pro at 3D printing. That's, I mean, I, I enjoy doing it, but it's not really my, my expertise. So um, I'm still learning. As you do dual extrusion 3D printing, there's something that they call a wall. What a wall does is it allows the um, extruder that's not supposed to be printing to sort of clean off the nozzle on that wall. And so it's, a, it's an intentional perimeter shell that you just eventually discard once it's done. But it allows that unused nozzle to wipe the excess um, so that you, know, you don't have this oozing problem happen. You might be able to tweak some settings to make it so that you, that oozing only happens on the wall and not on the print itself. I did a couple benchies. Um, this one was with red PLA and then this silver metal-like silk. Uh, PLA and um, mixed results. This is definitely not the best I've seen. <laughs> um, I had better results going this route where I had more PLA on the hull and the body of the ship and then just kind of like the trim uh, and the highlights were that, that silk PLA. So that turned out a little bit better. I do have the top that just had a hole kind of like burst right through. I told you my main reason for being excited about this was because it prints TPU. So here's a GoPro mount for my Armiton Marmot. And um, the, uh, it looks pretty good. Now this is not new PL, uh, or new TPU either. This might also be somewhat uh, humid P uh, TPU, sorry. But um, it doesn't look that bad. There are a few imperfections. Again, nothing that you couldn't clean up. Here is a metal-like silk PLA, the silver. Um, this is the same as what I used for the dual extrusion of the uh, Benchy. So obviously this is metal Groot. It turned out pretty well. He's got some issues with uh, horizontal lines on his face, so maybe some of those layers aren't really um, you know, adhering together as best they could. But we have Grown Up Groot in wood-filled PLA, and this looks awesome. Um, again, a few minor issues on this side, but you can pick that off if you needed to, but really cool. And remember, this is actually wood-infused. This is about 10 or 15% bamboo. Uh, in this PLA and, and it just looks really awesome to me. So, And this is my most ambitious 3D print to date. This is a wooden chest. <laughs> and this is made out of the same wooden PLA, 15% uh, uh, bamboo, and then I took a very dark stain and I stained it. You can stain wood infused PLA and uh, make it your own. And so I'll take the top off here. These are all individual pieces. And I printed this on this printer. Every one of those 
long pieces is a, a different print. And then you have like uh, the lock right here. That's the silk PLA. I, I still got to push that one in a little bit more. Uh, if you see, I got some bandages on my hand. I actually cut myself pretty bad trying to <laughs> uh, mess with this thing, um, especially putting in the lock and stuff. I had to cut away a little bit of uh, little material and then slice my thumb and my index finger open pretty bad. But either way, pretty cool. I still need to uh, lock this down. I'm gonna find a way to really get this hinge going properly. But um, yeah, I'm really proud of this, this box. So I like the touch screen. I like that you can uh, select all your settings. You can load and unload filament. You can preheat things for various reasons. Um, let's just go to home and I'll show you how high that print bed goes. I wish that the print bed was bigger, but I also realize that when you have a dual extrusion system like this, it can only go as far as the rightmost or the leftmost extruder uh, any given, you know, left or right uh, positioning. If the extrusion system is all the way on this side, then the rightmost extruder still has to be able to touch the, the leftmost part of the print bed. So because you have two different nozzles spaced about, what, this far apart, means you're, you're losing out on that much space and that much space on both sides of the print bed. Now, if you're printing ABS, you want to keep the door closed. Um, you also want to keep the cover on. Um, that way you can make sure that the interior air temperature is going to stay warm. But one thing I noticed um, with the case on or the, 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 the top covering on that sometimes disrupts these little feeder tubes. And so if the, let me see if I can make it happen or not. If this goes back and forth or maybe back this way, they start pushing up against the top. And then if you, if you try and make space and bring the tubes down so that they don't rub up against the top covering, well, then you're creating a much more um, extreme angle of how these are being bent. And then eventually one of these feeder tubes will most likely just pop right off like, like that. So the filament might still be um, extruding and coming into the, uh, you know, the hot end every, everything, but you'll have this feeder tube that's no longer really doing a whole lot. Now, one thing that I noticed about the Adventure 3 that I reviewed last year, the door, it feels good now, but there, when, when the extruder starts moving around, the, the dual extruder, so this thing is really a heavy extruder system, moving back and forth quickly, you're getting a lot of jostling like that, you will hear that this door starts rattling. So what I do is I just take some tape, this is just printer's tape, and I just put it about right there. And when I'm printing, this will keep it from rattling and from making a lot more noise than it should. When I got the Creator Max uh, in the box, I realized that one of the nozzles was a little bit higher than the other. And what you want to have is a nozzle that is, well, for a dual extruder system, is two nozzles that are exactly the same height. So in accordance with the print bed, um, and you can level the print bed, it's a three point leveling system as opposed to, as opposed to four points uh, leveling system. You want to make sure that those nozzles are exactly uh, level with each other. And so you use a card and they give you, among other extras, um, you know, like a manual um, extra print bed surfaces and stuff, some tools, they give you a leveling card. And so this is what you would use to stick underneath those nozzles as a print bed comes up and make sure that you got about the same amount of tug on those nozzles from the left one to the right one. Well, my left nozzle was a lot lower than my right one was. Um, you basically have to take apart the dual extruder assembly there. And then there are two areas where you can take an Allen wrench and unscrew the little bit that allows that uh, hot end to raise up and down. Then you can go ahead, uh, raise the print bed all the way up once both of those nozzles are loose and then they become level because they're loose. You push them up like this, then you tighten those down again once you get that level nozzle left, nozzle right. So hopefully yours comes normal. It doesn't have a discrepancy in nozzle height. The standard software that you'd use with the Creator Max is FlashPrint. And I use FlashPrint with the Venture 3 as well. It's a good software. I found most of what I needed to do in FlashPrint, so I'm okay with that. I also enjoyed using the USB connection rather than trying to mess with Wi-Fi, which I found a little bit finicky. I'd much rather use just a solid USB with my laptop 
Also a benefit of flash print is that you can just load in the Creator Max profile and it takes care of your bed size and all the capabilities and the dual extrusion system. You could take a dual part module and assign the left extruder to one part and the right extruder to another. Um, you can assign the right extruder to everything on the print bed or have multiple objects and kind of have a mix and match. Really up to you and it makes it a lot easier with flash print just to load in the Creator Max uh, profile there. Um, I like the fact that it has a lot of functionality and FlashForge has always done a great job with the functionality of their printers. The printer is for the most part enclosed so you have that ambient temperature inside for you know ABS or any other filament that that's important. Um, dual extrusion and dual material at the same time if you really wanted to. A dual extruder is probably maybe a little more complicated than it needs to be for your first printer, but if you've already been in the print game for a little while, you're gonna have a lot of fun with the dual extrusion of this. And it's built like a tank with this solid metal uh, exterior. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Flashforge USA for sending this Creator Max to me. I'll be putting it to good use, already have been. And until next time, happy printing.